Good morning, quilt people of Australia, UK, Canada, America. <laughs> These are all the places where I tend to hear from people, so special hi to you. And we have something really, really fun today that I love because it takes your quilt from you know, just being a pieced work or an applique work into actually really starting to give it life. And uh, for me, this is the main reason why I moved to doing my own quilting. In the very beginning when I was, um, you know, producing my own work and really comfortable with doing a quilt top, I would send it out and I'd when, when I'd get it back, it would just be somebody else's representation of what they thought the quilting would be. And that didn't work for me because I really wanted my own voice carried through my art from beginning to the end. Okay, so that's why I mean, I, I've talked about my journey with the actual quilting. Um, and again, ooh, so rough in the beginning, but I've stuck with it. And uh, this is what I've learned. Hopefully you'll learn something too. Um, so pre-quilting. Pre-quilting is essential. I mean, I don't know if that's really the name. That's what I call it. Okay, so to be fair. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it's just, I know what I know and half of it, you know, I make up as I go along, which is fine. Um, just, you know, don't be afraid to do that too, right? We all get so caught up in, oh, is this right or whatever? Is it your version of right? Yes, it is. Awesome. Okay. So pre-quilting is the quilting that I do without the batting or the back. Okay. So it's because what happens is, um, I mean, I'm sure you've all experienced this if you do your own quilting, right? When you do like a really tight stipple or anything like that, it tends to contract that area, sometimes giving you a problems in neighboring areas, right? And so to avoid some of that, now it's still going to happen, but it's going to happen to a lesser degree because you're not going through all three layers, right? Just the top. And you can kind of manage it and stretch that portion out a little bit so that when the quilting is done, when it does contract a little bit, um, hopefully it'll uh, make up for some of that that you don't want, right? Because that that's really thrown me off a few times. So, um, we're just going to be looking at the top today. Oh, what do you think of it? Right? I'm starting to, you know, put all the elements together. Uh, I put on the little tree yesterday. Uh, the big tree, like, two days ago. So, uh, like I talked about, the only elements are the Canadian goose and the leaves. I posted the leaves on um, Instagram. I couldn't do it on Facebook because I was in Facebook jail. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I called myself... A very colorful name uh, for, <laughs> anyhow, Facebook didn't appreciate me using that word. <laughs> so, anyhow, I'm out of Facebook jail now. Yay. <laughs> so, we shall continue. Okay, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, so all the elements are coming together. Oh, I know what I was talking about. The leaves. Oh, check it out. It's on Instagram. I will put it on Facebook now that I'm out of Facebook jail. But I'm super, super happy with that. Just to acknowledge um, kind of the intersection that we're in historically in America right now, which is, I think, I mean, it's just so interesting what's going on in our world. You know, there's kind of this really big change, right? That's kind of happening. I feel like, you know, one chapter is kind of, you know, hopefully ending and we can be more respectful and have empathy for our minority communities. Being a minority myself, and an immigrant, I'm very sensitive to these things, as you might imagine. So, um, in terms of not only having this be a COVID quilt, but also acknowledging uh, the whole Black Lives Movement um, that we're in right now. Um, so, in terms of this, I wanted to address kind of the areas that I'm going to be pre-quilting, okay? So like, look at this. I have kind of a quilt design Right? Some of which I'm going to um, pull out and go to pre-quilting, whereas other parts of it I'm going to go to the main quilting. And this also informs what the back looks like, which is also important, right? I know a lot of us as quilters will sometimes look at the back of the quilt and be impressed or not based off of how that was executed. Okay? So the uh, leaves that are going to be kind of going from this area down into the kind of abyss of you know this white void and so uh, i wanted to acknowledge like i said the whole black lives Moves matter um black lives matter movement by putting 
the faces of so many that we've lost and witnessed being killed, right? Let's, let's call it what it is, right? Being killed, right? Unnecessarily. Um, and so I wanted to put the faces of many of those that we've lost um, unnecessarily, um, you know, kind of through here so that each leaf is to honor, right? That person who is um, gone from us much too soon, right? And so um, that's going to be one of the next sections. However, I'm going to be doing that once I get the bubble jet set. Bubble jet set. <laughs> that's just fun to say. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, I am going to be working on that. Uh, next, and as far as just getting my whole like quilting program done, okay? So th the first part that I'm looking at is um, just the large tree, okay? So the big tree is has its own, you know, quilting plan, right? And I can't stress enough that you have to have a quilting plan. If you're just going to go into it and just wing it, you're going to end up with a mess. It's not going to be cool. You need to plan out rulers, grids, um, templates, however that you're going to actually execute the quilting on it. And so the first part that I looked at was really just addressing this tree. Okay. And so we'll look at how I'm going to pre-quilt that because I don't want um, the full pull right? Of the three layers, I just want it kind of light on the top, like a surface quilting and not have the, um, you know how it gets with, with the actual quilting. It just gives you a lot more kind of bump bubble life, right? To the fabric itself. So we're going to be looking at uh, the large tree and my quilt plan for that. And then what else I'm kind of breaking out as far as pre-quilting versus quilting. So pre-quilting is going to be the trees and then some of this down here that just looks like a white void. It doesn't look like anything right now, but I have a big plan for that, which is going to be super cool. And it's going to make it look like kind of a, um, a segue from the lower part, which is all paper pieced, right? And kind of these... Um, polygon shapes with a bunch of triangles, right? So that's going to be down here as far as paper pieced. And then up above that is just going to be pre-quilted, right? So to give it the color that I want without necessarily going through the whole quilting process. Now, I have other things that I have planned, especially in, you know, what I call the sky web. Um, in terms of giving that a little bit of sparkle and shimmer, like we talked about before. And so we'll be looking at that as well, but I don't I haven't quite decided yet how much I'm going to pre-quilt versus how much I'm going to actually quilt. Okay, so let's look at that and then I'll show you just um, to focus us in on one idea. I'm just going to be showing my uh, pre-quilting plan just for this tree and how I go about that, that whole process from beginning to end. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I wanted to talk a little bit about how I arrived at this imagery. I've talked a lot about my Canadian, um, you know, background and uh, my experience with growing up there. And I was really touched by the First Nations artwork, right? And how they incorporate these amazing faces into their totem poles and things like that. So I wanted to make sure that I incorporated a piece of that into this work just based off of what I've been going through and um, you know my personal experience as a Canadian during this time of COVID in America and I really love the kind of spirituality of the First Nations people and how they you know t take care of the earth are part of the earth and um, you know just their entire approach to how we are not only one but we are you know one with all of it right? Not just uh, some of it. So I'm really, really happy with the way that this turned out. I love the First Nation arc, um, iconography, and I hope that, uh, you know, I've done justice um, to my Canadian heritage. Okay, so the first and one of the most important decisions you're going to make is thread selection. Okay, so I'm going to, and this is how I decide it, is to just put down some threads, right? on the part that I'm going to be pre-quilting and look at how I feel. I'm going to stop right there because I really want this point to be made. I put the thread down. 
right? You can see them one, two, three, four, all right? I look at the thread and <clears throat> I look at how it makes me feel. I try not to look with my eyes when I'm working on my art as much as possible. What does that mean? So you can look at things a very bunch of different ways. How I look at this type of work is with other senses beyond just my eyes. Of course I want it to look good, but more importantly, I want it to feel a certain way. And so I, I, I look at what this information is giving to me, what, how is my brain receiving this, and what um, feels right, almost beyond what looks right, okay? The feeling I want for this tree is almost, you know, the old ancient sense of Mother Nature and all of the, you know, <clears throat> spirits that have gone before us uh, yet still somehow resonate amongst us. And so with that in mind, I want that spirit of the faces to be evident without being the first thing you see in the quilt. Does that make sense? Like, I want it to be a visual sense of discovery of finding these faces in the tree, not that you just walk up to it and you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's what it's about, okay? Because it's not what it's about. Um, so I have some different browns and I have a gray here. Um, you can see I've already kind of tacked it down with a thread that is the same color. Now I could go through and pre-quilt it with the um, exact same color as the fabric, and that would certainly help it diminish right into the background you wouldn't you wouldn't see it as much um but i'm not sure that i want it to be that subtle and so i wanted to play with some colors because this color is kind of a, a dark mushroom i don't even know how else to describe it right and it's kind of a gray it has some brown in it and so i wanted to pull some of those other colors that i felt would kind of complement that and what i'm feeling again what i'm feeling not what i'm seeing right is that this gray is giving me just a tad bit of, um, just the right amount of contrast, right? From the fabric to the thread. Because <clears throat> this thread, let me see if I have, I might have some of it on my machine right here, hold on. <clears throat> this is the thread that's the same color, right? And you can see the difference. This is just giving me a little more life right, than the actual color of the fabric itself. You can see how much brown this one has in it, whereas this one is far more gray, okay? So again, thinking about the ghosts, if you will, or the spirits of those that, um, you know, the consciousness of um, that we all live in and amongst if we're willing to hear it, right? So those faces of, you know, that whole realm, I, I feel like I want to kind of peer right? Peer through the surface of this tree. Okay, so I'm going to go with this gray because again, I feel like it's the re right representation for all those things I just spoke about. Okay, now I have my quilting plan, right? And if, if you don't have the ability to do this in the computer, you really can just draw it out. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this, but you don't need to do something quite this complicated, but I would suggest having a plan. So this is my quilting plan. And I lay it over top of the image itself and I kind of feel for the edges to make sure that the edges are in fact within the lines of the plan. Okay, so I'm feeling good about that. I've double checked that the really important elements to me, like the faces here, are in fact within the boundaries, right, of where they're gonna be. I might wanna scoot this one just over a bit. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'll go through and pin the perimeter, right? So I can feel where the perimeter is and just kind of, right, pin this all down, just along the perimeter. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and do that and do all this pinning and then we're ready to start marking it and pre-quilting it. Okay, so I have it pinned down, and now I'm going through the processes of just really determining where is the edge. Now, because this is um, applique on top of here, it creates a little bit of a ridge that when you find it, you can just keep, you know, riding that ridge wherever it kind of leads you 
Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of feeling your way through it and finding that. Oh, there it goes up there. Okay. And so I'm just really mapping out where is the actual tree underneath versus where it is and where it's pinned right now. I also, it also gives me the opportunity if I want to, to say like move this edge over or something like that if it's not uh, falling in the right place, right? So I'm just gonna go through and again, keep finding where the edge is, it's over here, right? And this is wash away ink so that uh, if it does get on the fabric, hopefully it won't be a disaster. Let me peek where it is, there it is. Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna go through and do that and then we will move on. All right, so I'm actually ready to get started now. And what I'm going to look at is doing just the main trunk and the main branches, the parts that I can easily identify and also that have the most important information actually in them. Uh, so as I'm getting started, I'm going to be um, you know, using a hopping foot on this uh, on my regular machine. Um, so there's two ways that I, I'm gonna go about doing this. Um, I'm gonna take really, really, really tiny stitches to essentially um, tear through the paper making it easier to remove. So that's one approach, um, is to have a tiny, tiny, tiny stitch, okay? That'll make it easier to remove the paper. The other way is to do uh, much bigger stitches than you would normally do. What you don't wanna do is an in-between, um, because what happens is if you do like an in-between stitch, when you're removing the paper, you get a lot of pieces of paper caught underneath it, and that's not what you want. If it's a bigger stitch, it'll be easier to remove the paper because um, the paper's not getting trapped right under the um, under the regular stitching um, so that's one way about going about it is with a bigger than normal stitch or else a smaller than normal stitch so that you can really just you know absolutely tear through that paper and have as little residue underneath now you're still going to get some and so uh, after i'm done that process i'll go through with a pair of tweezers and just kind of pull out the little bit of white paper and stuff that uh, that you can kind of see. But um, if you do end up washing your quilt with a technique like this, uh, the majority of the paper will dissolve or come up, um, just, uh, you know, be washed out uh, from the process. And uh, I know that there's lots of other papers that people um, use, but because I do a lot of my work on the computer and then print it, I just use regular paper. I could try and find thinner paper, I guess. But uh, anyways, if you are looking to make it easier on yourself and you're doing it hand-drawn, there's tissue-like paper. I have it somewhere, but I'm not going to find it. Um, tissue-like paper that you can use that's more specific for this type of work and that you might find easier to work with. Just know that there are options. Explore that. Um, well, eh, I just do it this way. So, All right, let's get started. Um, again, I'm just going to do the main trunk and the larger branches. When I, once I get into the small little very fine um, you know, branches and, and things like that, I'm going to just visually look at what I'm doing and try and apply that to the small branches and small areas, um, but I'm not gonna be doing it with this method because it would just be too, too difficult to always make sure that I'm on top of the right area. So I wanna do that visually, not try and do it through the paper. Okay, one little side note as I'm going through and doing this. Uh, the first is to just go really slow, all right? Take your time. The second is when you're doing this kind of work, I'm, if you've done it before, you already know this, but um, the trick is to stay strong yet relaxed, right? As you're going through, there's a whole uh, energy that you'll discover that where you're holding it strong, but you're relaxed and letting it kind of just smoothly move under. And it's finding that relaxed place and not just being always in tension, right? That um, it really begins for you in terms of finding how it actually works, um, at least for me. Okay, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to contemplate is rulers, um, things like this. You ever heard that expression, I couldn't draw a straight line, so I became an artist? <laughs> right? 
<laughs> quilting a straight line is one of the hardest things in the world. So having a ruler or a guide or something to run your foot along is actually super helpful. Um, you just gotta make sure, you can't use a regular ruler, right? There has to be a super extra thick uh, plastic ruler in order to do that. Um, so we'll see how that goes and hopefully I can quilt in a straight line. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do just a quick check to make sure that I'm in fact happy with the progress thus far. As you can see, I started way down here. So what I'm gonna do is the parts that I haven't done yet that I still need um, as information to inform the more detailed areas, I'm going to stick a pin in that, so to speak. <laughs> All right, that there. And then the parts that I have done, I can kind of just start to uh, tear away. For this process of kind of picking the paper out, I love, love, love this tool. It is a sewing awl, right? So it's pointy, but it's not so much like a pair of scissors or something like that. So it makes it easier to kind of, you know, just pick this paper out and easier to just kind of lift that and get it get it going okay okay starting to remove the paper here you can see that the faces are starting to be seen i'm happy with the way that it has turned out so far so i'm just going to continue on um, up and around the tree just doing this whole thing uh, i have to get to work so i'm not going to belabor the point but you understand how it works so <laughs> Uh, I'll show you in the next videos how this all turns out, but I got a jet for now. So I will see you next time. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you could just hit that subscribe button, that would really help me out. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.